Hey guys, just thought I'd do another little update on where we're at with crypto and everything going on with FTX and all of that. It's all kicking off still, getting worse. So first, let's talk about, actually, no, first, there's another couple of exchanges now that look like they could be in trouble, potentially. I mean, we said the other day, you should have everything off exchanges right now anyway, but if you do still have anything off exchanges, definitely get them off now. So crypto.com and Gate are the two that now appear to be in trouble as well today there's been some strange moving of funds between different exchanges for when they basically a load of exchanges basically showed their proof of reserves to try and tell people they weren't insolvent but around them doing that there's been some weird movement of funds between them as if maybe some of them were borrowing funds from another exchange to fake their reserves and then send it back so it's all a bit dodgy, so you just shouldn't have anything on exchanges right now. So you should get that off. But let's do the FTX saga. So that's they're completely they've filed for bankruptcy chapter eleven. So they're completely done, bankrupt. More than likely, any money left on there probably never seen again. It'd be great if people could get something back, but for now, it's probably best to write it off in your head and move on. And if you get it back, it's a bonus, and try and learn from it. So, the story though, the plot, just thickens and seems to get worse and worse with what's going on there. The whole thing that shows how FTX kind of come from nowhere, was suddenly massive, and now it's kind of come out, but I doubt any of them will see any prison time for it, because they're all linked. So basically, Gary Gensler is the head of the SEC, who are the Security Exchange Commission. They are currently in a case with XRP. They're trying to say that it's a security and that th it should come under their jurisdiction and they need certain regulations to protect customers and all of this rubbish, which is a load of rubbish, but whether it is or not, it doesn't really matter. Um, so basically, he's high up in that. He's the head of it. But he was a former professor of economics at MIT. Um, and at MIT, his boss, the, prof the head of economics there, is... I'm checking in Glenn Ellison, who happens to be the father of Caroline Ellison, who was the CEO of Alameda, the investment arm of FTX. So her and Sam Beckman Freud were at the top of the I mean he founded Alameda as well as FTX, but she was the head of that the CEO. And so her dad was the boss, the old boss of the head of the second. They were both professors at MIT. Also, Sam's parents are both uh, lawyers who I think pretty sure from what I've heard they're both professors at Stanford in the high up university they've got links to high up people too so it's kind of there's once you start to look into it at the time everything was fine if this was a good exchange it was it was good to use it was whatever and people just went along with it but now that everything's gone wrong and people start to look into it it, it, some stuff kind of becomes like yeah okay that should have been a red flag and stuff starts to become obvious so it's just a shame that people didn't see it earlier i mean some people did some people kind of did point stuff out and they weren't involved with ftx but overall it was pretty trusted well-respected exchange so it's a shame but there's a whole load of stuff coming out i mean apparently the the top 10 people within ftx had some kind of weird um, drug filled groupy thing going on with they all lived together and it was all very weird and stuff. Apparently, drugs, you know, were pretty common or stimulants and whatever within FTX. I don't know. I haven't read that much into that, but a lot of weird, strange stuff going on there. Um, and it all seems to be coming out. I mean, if you see, I haven't, I mean, I know what uh, SPF looked like. I didn't know, I hadn't, didn't have a clue what the head of Alameda looked like. I mean, she looks like she's about 12 years old. It's, I mean, that should have been a warning, that fact already. Like, to have someone that looks so, I mean, 28 is not super old in the financial world. She's got some experience, but not loads. So, and I've seen some interviews with her since where, you know, she's talking about how they were. And just even the stuff she says that it's not someone I would want to be trusting with tons and tons of money. But that's with hindsight isn't it? It's it's easy to say stuff with hindsight. But 
that's where we're at now with FTX. Apparently, there's different rumors. Some say that um, the top people are on the run and they're off somewhere else. Some people say they're still in the Bahamas, that law enforcement's there, that stuff's being done with bankruptcy. No one really knows for sure right now what's going on. But I very much doubt any of them get prosecuted, see prison time for anything because they've got links to the right kind of people. Another thing is that he was the second biggest donator to the Democrat Party behind, I think, just behind George Soros was the top. He's the second biggest, given like 40, 40 million or more, I don't know, something like that, some crazy amount he's given to the de Democrats as donations, which, as well, that will have come from users' funds. Really, that should be given back by the Democrat Party to go back to users, because that was clearly their funds that were stolen, but again, I highly doubt that happens. But he's, you know, they're linked through family to high places, they've given money to government and stuff, and they will undoubtedly get away with it not get charged with anything whereas the one of the devs from tornado cash i covered this on the podcast quite a while back is still in prison <clears throat> so he got arrested because tornado cash was blacklisted basically tornado cash what it does is way for people to kind of on the blockchain your money can be tracked with tornado cash you could kind of you put it in and then it and then it will come back out or to another of your wallets and will be clean it can't be tracked for it so it's not technically illegal but Obviously, the government doesn't want that. They want to be able to track everything. So one of the devs of Tony Cash, all he did is write the code for it. And he's been arrested. He's still in prison. He's been there for a few months. Who knows what happened to that? He'll probably be in prison for a very long time. But then you've got people like this who stole billions and billions from customers, been doing illegal things for a long time, and they'll probably get clean away with it. That's the way the world works, unfortunately. So let's move on to the fallout. Obviously, uh, Crypto.com and Gate look like they're now in trouble. Uh, BlockFi, they've gone bankrupt too, so they've um, hired bankruptcy council or whatever it's called, but they're basically bankrupt because they were, no, 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 they weren't bought out of the forge, but they, they, they were lent, or they did lend a lot to FTX, which is gone and lost, so they're now bankrupt, which is what we said about with the, when I talked about the contagion and the, the kind of secondary fallout of it, is that all these other platforms are going to go down. So Voyager were originally bailed out by FTX uh, after the whole Luna thing. So they're done too. And apparently uh, I saw something from the the head of Voyager, or I imagine it's the head, saying that essentially FTX didn't actually really give them any money because FTX basically bailed them out, but then said they had to then lend the money back to FTX. So Essentially, they didn't actually give them anything. They just said, we'll bow you out. Here's the money. Lend it back to us. It's their lending platform. So that one's a bit strange, too. It was a bit of... I remember at the time, people were saying it was a bit underhand and a bit dodgy, the takeover. So that's that. So there we done. BlockFi, Crypto.com could be done now. Gate.io. Basically, all the exchanges have been kind of showing their proof of reserves to customers to try and encourage them that they're not insolvent because they don't want... A bank run essentially which appears to be happening on crypto.com right now their token cro is down about 20 percent so far today so it's not looking too good i i expect a couple more well a few platforms already going down probably another couple exchanges will go bankrupt i don't know really how many but i imagine there's a few we've probably got another few weeks of maybe stuff falling apart before we can kind of try and pick up pieces from it but hopefully, I mean, that will look at the positive. That's hopefully going to kind of mark the bottom of the market. And from there, well, we're not going to go straight up. We're going to have a long period of sideways action. But if it's a bottom, we can kind of start looking towards it. Another couple of interesting things. Well, not really interesting. Some of them interesting, some of them bad. So Ukraine. Who remembers Ukraine? A ton of money laundering going on there. But essentially with Ukraine, uh, they had a load of crypto donated to them. Which I remember happening quite early on, and apparently they had some deal, struck out something with FTX to store it with FTX. So that essentially is gone. But essentially, a lot of people thinking that what more than likely happened with that was that money was probably used to go to use donations to the Democratic Party and the US government. So basically, they laundered the money by 
you know, the money that they've given to Ukraine, they probably got a load of it back through FTX in the form of crypto from Ukraine. But I mean, that's, we don't know for sure. Some of that's hearsay, but it wouldn't surprise me. There's, I mean, Ukraine is a whole money laundering thing along with FTX, which it seemed to have been. Um, and the sad thing, there's a, a, a statement from the Ontario Teachers Pension Plan, which apparently they had invested a ton of money from the, from the pension plan into FTX, and that's probably now gone. So there's just so many knock-on effects. It's not even just people who individually had money on FTX. There's, you know, people, there's investment funds, pension plans that have invested in it, and that could now be gone. So it is not good. There's a lot of fallout from this that is still happening and it's still going to happen. Now, what I've also got is a list of essentially projects the FTX or Alameda basically invested in, started up, have a huge stake in and whatever. So they're things that people need to be careful of because there's going to be, they're going to be struggling and in trouble. So there's a lot of things. I mean, BlockFi is one on the list, which is already gone. Uh, Yuga Labs Circle, which is there behind um, the USDC. There's Genesis, Near Protocol, Aptos was one launched recently. Uh, they're behind. Oh, I'll just see some of the, if there's any of the big ones on there. There's a big list on, um, on Twitter that you can find. Polygon, so that's Matic. They're apparently invested quite a bit in that. Solana as well, which we've said. Solana's been struggling. That's been down a lot because they're a big player in that. Voyager Digital, obviously, I said about that one already. One inch, here's there again. Lido, they're down quite a lot because obviously any of the any of this that they still have, like these the coins, if they have any of them, that's going to be liquidated to liquidate all their assets. So basically, there's going to be a huge amount of it sold if they hold a huge amount. So that's not going to be good for the price action of that. So there's an absolute ton of stuff. Uh, I see if there's any other big ones on there. I think that's most of the ones really, but you need to be careful of that. If you hold anything that FTX and Alameda had a big part in, a big stake in, that's you might want to get out of that. Well, it might be too late now, but expect a lot of them to struggle and don't be on any exchanges. And I mean, even holding any, any coin right now is kind of risky because market still could go further down i don't think we've fully bond i mean we're close down to i think at the moment we're trading around 16 but we've been down to as low as about 15 and a half thousand so there's you know that it's not a place to be speculative right now you want to be very risk off the only things really that i would say would be okay to hold right now would be bitcoin and ethereum because they're the strongest. I mean, to me, Binance look solid and look strong, and you think the BNB would be okay. But with all this going on with exchanges, you just don't know. You you don't know because the whole the whole thing with the whole thing with the bank. Obviously, people are going to say about with the whole FTX thing that it shows that crypto's a scam and this and that, like the money's not real and stuff's not really there. But what happened to FTX is essentially the reason they went down is not because of all the dodgy stuff they were doing. The reason they went down is because people kind of noticed it and there was a bank run. So a bank run is essentially where people suddenly lose trust in the place they've got their money and they all try and take it out. And the reason that was a problem was because they didn't have the money there. So the first few people got their stuff out fine. And after that, withdrawals had to be halted. There was nothing left. So, I mean, it's called a bank run because it happened to banks originally. And it's the same nowadays. So if you, if that happened to a bank today, any bank within the traditional financial world, the same would happen. They would go down. If there's a bank run, let's just say there's a big bank, like UK, let's just say Lloyd's, that's a big bank in the UK. If suddenly something come out and everyone lost confidence in Lloyd's, did not want their money there, and everyone tried to withdraw their money from Lloyd's, Lloyd's would completely collapse. Same as FTX. Now, they might not have been doing as many dodgy stuff as FTX, probably been doing a few dodgy things within the banking sector everything seems to be dodgy in the financials but the, the same would happen if any big thing any big financial institution a bank run on it would probably cause it to collapse so the thing that they have to try and avoid is that one thing or that news whatever that would cause that so 
this doesn't mean that crypto is any kind of scam the money's not real and whatever like people have been scammed by ftx by spf but it's the same as traditional money the they've you've people have deposited funds they've taken your funds use them for something else and they don't have funds to pay out to everyone and that is what happens with banks banks have a very tiny percentage of the money that they should have and if if everyone decided to i mean not even everyone probably i would say if, if 20 percent of people tried to withdraw everything from any big bank it would probably collapse they have very small and even more so within the last few years the, the, the fractional banking reserve and things like that that with fractal banking they're able to keep only a very small percentage of money but acts like they can cover everything they just make money up with mortgages and all this stuff where they're lending this money out they just make it up they don't have the money so that's that's kind of another another conversation to go deep into that but money doesn't really exist just the same as maybe you could say crypto doesn't exist as i talked about the other week when i talked about value things have value if the the buyer decides they have value like if you if everyone decides that they're not going to use that bank and they don't think the money has value then it doesn't have any value and it will go to zero so you need to understand that it's not really any different and if you go back to 2008 that's essentially what happened to the big uh, banks investment banks that went down people lost confidence and everyone decided they wanted their money out and the money wasn't there so it's not it doesn't mark out crypto as being a scam you know there's things about crypto which are, are dodgy and people get scammed by people within crypto. it's maybe easier for someone to scam you within crypto but crypto itself is not a scam it, you can make a lot of money there you can lose a lot of money there if you do the right things there's money to be made there still but it's obviously now is not in a good place because it's a bear market if you go back i wasn't even around in the last, last bear market I was, I was alive of course not in crypto but obviously i've you know researched and listened to people who were there and all stuff and it's the same the the kind of the bottom of the bear market is marked by things like this happening and pe- everyone saying right that's it i'm done like, i'm done with crypto i'm not doing anymore it's a scam blah 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 going to zero but that's what happens that's what happened every time but there'll be people now saying that that were around in the last bear market and probably say in the last one i just look back in time stuff goes in cycles so it will come back and there will be another bull run and everyone will join back in later so if you can stay and you can protect your money and learn and educate and improve then you'll be the one in the best position to make the most at the next bull run but as i said before on the podcast as well crypto you should look at not as trying to make an income in the last bull run people got such easy money that people thought well you can just make some money on crypto and you never got work again which when i first came in that that kind of i had that kind of thought too i was like this is brilliant i just make some money and don't need to work and you have to kind of give you the wrong mentality the wrong mindset what you need to do is you need to build cash flow and work on an income that's going to support you and make you lots of money and you then multiply it in crypto so an investment is just on top of your income so you've got a good amount of time now to just literally contract everything on your income crypto for a while is going to be very boring there'll be opportunities still to make money in the next year or so with a little rally or whatever but overall put that time and effort into building your income and then the extra income you've made will be ready to invest at the right time so you could use it as a positive thing you can always frame everything positively and negatively like yeah like crypto in a bad way everything's going to suck lots of people have lost money but you could say okay you know what for now i'm just going to kind of put it on the back burner a little bit keep an eye on it but concentrate everything onto growing my income and that's going to turn out a lot better for you in the long run because like i say crypto goes in these cycles it's only in that crazy bull run phase for like one year and then you've got three years of not so what, where's your income there if you're only having your income for crypto so look for the positives try and find them and i will you know update if any other big things interesting things happen be doing the full podcast again next weekend and for now stay safe out there keep it off exchanges not your keys not your coins all of that stuff uh just take care and i'll speak to you again soon